What's up everybody? Dark and early today. I am joining you with a full face of e.l.f. An e.l.f. one brand tutorial. I know I've done an e.l.f. one brand, but it was a long time ago and a lot of those products may or may not be around or there's so many new things now that it's not quite so relevant anymore. And I have had a lot of requests to do more one brand looks and also redo some of the ones that are older. And let me tell you, we got some new stuff in this video. Some weird stuff, some unusual products, but I'm also going to mix those things in with some classic e.l.f. products, so it's just going to be e.l.f. madness in this video. First thing on the weird list is this water droplet balm, and this says this lightweight moisturizer transforms from a balm to water for a refreshing and cooling sensation, and you're supposed to apply it to clean skin morning or night, rub into skin for optimal absorption. This is like solid, you guys. Like there's a little bit of moisture when you touch it, but that is like hard. So you're gonna kind of press into it. Kind of feels like a hardened thing of Noxzema a little bit, if you've ever worked with that. Or actually butter. That's what it makes me think of. Like, look, it's kind of the color of butter. It's actually a little bit hard to just put your finger in and pick it up immediately. But I'm gonna start rubbing this into my skin and it's immediately going to this super thin, like, yeah, thin as water type of feel. Well, maybe just a teeny bit thicker than water, but not much. Not much scent to this product, but it's just, it is ultra thin now. Like, it's crazy. So I've got that on all over, and I was wearing this um, the last couple days, and I don't feel like it's quite enough moisture for me. I'm a normal skin type and it feels like fine now, but I was really keeping an eye on my face like as I went throughout the day the other day and I thought I actually felt a little bit dry, which was weird. I had some staying power issues with my makeup like in the center of my face, but overall I felt more dry than I usually do. But today I think I used a little bit extra, so maybe that'll help. And then I've also got this. This is a little bit strange, guys. I mean, it's a gel mist, literally a hydrating gel mist, a gel to liquid mist that plumps and hydrates. And it says to apply this to clean skin or after moisturizer, allow to absorb into skin prior to primer application. And I'm just gonna brace myself here because this comes out with, with some intensity. <laughs> it just hits you. Oh. It hits you with a lot of moisture. It's the amount of moisture that makes you feel the need to go over it with your hands. You know how setting spray is just kind of like fine mist and we're good and you don't need to touch it? Yeah, you kind of feel like you need to touch this. I don't know what the point is. I'm not really sure why I bought it. I just thought, oh, gel mist, that's different. I mean, it's just a thing of gel. It sprays out really like gel. I mean, I don't know that it really went gel to liquid. This, the texture of the product, literally transformed into something different. Here, I think they're just pushing the gel out through a sprayer and it's coming out it's so intense, like it feels like a lot. I would never throw this on like later in the day over my makeup. And yeah, it did give me a little added moisture. My skin actually feels kind of sticky now. But that's another one of the things that I have worn alongside the water droplet balm and it wasn't, again, the combination of the two didn't leave me feeling super hydrated all day long. Pulling out um, a product that I've had for a while now, this is the e.l.f. Hydrating Primer. Really do like this stuff. Um, I would put this up against the Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating version. Um, it's so smoothing. It does offer a little extra moisture to your skin. I do not love the smell of it. It's not as though they went to great efforts to like make this smell like I don't know, cotton candy or something, but it's it just got kind of a natural sort of, I don't know, crayon type vibe. <laughs> natural and crayons, I don't think that even really goes together, but you might know what I'm talking about if you've used that. I need another drink of coffee. Next up, I've got this uh, funky foundation brush. I gotta get you the close up here so you can see. It's called the Swirl Foundation Brush. Do you see the cut? It almost looks like it's got little like stair steps. It's like a tiered makeup brush and then there's this hole in the top. It doesn't go like super far down, but they've 
cut down in it. It says this rose-shaped brush. Oh, that was the description. It's a rose-shaped brush. <laughs> it has a fluid reservoir to swirl and blend liquid foundation onto the skin for sheer to full coverage based on how much foundation is in the center of the brush. There is also a triangular handle here, and what's that supposed to do? That's supposed to provide ultimate control, and it says add product in the center of the brush and apply to the face by buffing onto the skin in a circular swirling motion. So the foundation that I have here. I don't know that I've ever really talked about this foundation, but it's the Flawless, I think it's called Flawless Finish. It doesn't say on the bottle, but it's the one with the pump in the frosted bottle, and I have it in sand. This is oil-free, has SPF 15 sunscreen. I repurchased this recently, but I have had this in my collection before. I feel like I've never really been able to hone in on the right shade. This shade will work, um, this sand color, although it seems just a hair light. I ordered it online. So I'm gonna pump my product down into the hole the reservoir. I did like a pump and a quarter or something there. All right. So I think I will try to distribute this a little bit first, just so we don't start buffing it all into one place. Um, the, the brush is super soft, no question. Very, very soft. And coverage-wise, I, I would rate this foundation at a straight up light to medium. I think with the amount of product that I'm using here, I'm going to get medium. And I've had okay staying power with it, like it seemed to wear down completely on my nose with very little setting powder on top, but wore pretty well actually all over the rest of my face. Although the rest of my face did feel a little dry but it's like, okay, product was still there. If you just handed me this brush and I did not know that there was a product reservoir in the center of it, I don't think I would know. Like the experience of applying it and just buffing it in feels like just about any other dense brush. Um, but the coverage, the coverage is better today than it was yesterday when I used their new sponge. They have a new blending sponge. I was just going to mention this real quick. It's a latex-free sponge. There's not really anything uniquely different about this one. It's just you wet it down. It's going to get bigger. It does get a little softer. My thing I don't like about this is it feels very rubbery. Um, when you use a beauty blender, like there's a softness to that. Like when you bounce it onto the skin, you don't hear like a rubbery... I don't know. Here I kind of felt like I was pounding my skin with this, even though it was soft. It was weird. It's like the outer texture of the sponge is what I'm talking about. It had kind of a rubbery, um, I feel like I'm totally failing at describing this, but it was soft. The, the sponge overall felt soft, but the texture hitting my skin felt hard. Too many other good sponges out there to really like waste your time on that. But this brush, yes, it did give me better coverage. Although the reservoir idea, I, I feel like I could have gotten just as good a coverage with something had I not put the product into the thing. And it is shedding on me. I'm pulling out a few hairs here. I would say not a bad brush and um, not a brush I would discontinue using for sure. I would keep that in the rotation. Now for concealer. This is something I've had in my collection for a little while. I think I've talked about it briefly. It's the Lightweight Concealer Stick in Fair to Light. I believe this is from their Beautifully Bare line. A lot of that stuff has this mirrored packaging. And this concealer feels quite a bit thicker than I would have expected, um, given the description. <laughs> Lightweight. As you can see, I'm going to apply this to the areas of my face where I really want to brighten. I don't have a lot of e.l.f. concealers right now, so this is kind of what we've got to work with. And since this brush is not super big. I think it may work for blending out the bulk of this concealer, but I had a really hard time blending this out yesterday with um, that purple beauty blender, or e.l.f. blending sponge, I should say. Um, it just, like, again, it was the rubbery texture. There wasn't enough actual softness in the sponge to easily blend out something that's a little thicker like this. And normally, you know, when you've got a concealer that goes on kind of thick, a sponge would tend to be the go-to, right? At least that's my logic usually, because it has the moisture in it. It kind of breaks down the product just a bit and makes it easier to move across the skin. But that sponge, there's nothing more frustrating than a sponge you just can't agree with, you know? I mean, of course there are more frustrating things in life than that. I'm not trying to be too dramatic here. In the makeup sense, you just want your sponge to work. Okay, what do we think there? Um, I, I do feel brightened. 
Um, I can still see you a little bit dark circle in there peeking through because I didn't really have anything to go at those dark circles really specifically with. And then here's a product I really like from e.l.f. Um, this finishing powder in Fair to Light. I think this might also be another beautifully bare thing. The texture of this powder is good. It reminds me so much so much of L'Oreal True Match. It's super smooth, really fabulous feel. It doesn't look heavy on the skin. I don't own True Match in a color this light and I love this type of shade if you're gonna like set the under eye because you maintain some of that brightness that you got from your concealer. So I'm just gonna get some of this. This is my small tapered brush from e.l.f., which is a total must, by the way. If you have not tried this brush, I use it all the time for under eye setting powder. I use it for, you could do highlight really well with this. Powdering over targeted areas, like I'm just gonna use this powder around the T-zone a bit. Winner, great product. And then I'm gonna bronze the skin up with a little bit of my warm bronzer. And I have not used this in quite some time, but this is a great bronzer. It's one of those rediscovered things where you like pull it out and you're kicking yourself because you're like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Ah, so I love this, it's so good. So I'm using my e.l.f. complexion brush. This is, again, I, I'm not just pulling these e.l.f. brushes. You guys know this, just for the sake of this video. I mean, I use these a lot. You see these coming up in my videos often. So what I'm doing, by the way, to get the color, I'm mainly going between the two bronzery shades and just then giving it a little swirl in the compact overall. Like really pretty, natural, believable warmth to the skin. Not doing an intense contour, but letting, you know, a little bit of that product concentrate itself right in here. So I've hit the places I would normally contour, and then I'm just going to give this a little swirl and think about, like, where the sun naturally hits. Give the skin a little more life here where it got really light from the concealer. I love the texture of this powder because it's pigmented, but I'm not like kicking up hardly anything when I swirl my brush in. Like it's just picking up on the brush, not having a ton of excess. I like that. Pardon my hair, it's getting a little sprucey up there. Um, I'm gonna use some of this Matte Blush Duo in the shade Soft and Subtle. There are a couple of these. One has a little bit deeper, rosier color in it. I wanna use this, and I've used this before because I just, it's fascinating. This does so much more on your skin than you would ever believe. So this neutrally shade here, this is my up and up blush brush. I don't have like an e.l.f. blush brush on hand right now. But I swirl some of this on the outer part of the apple of my cheek and you saw me like tap off the excess. So I have very little on my brush, but that shade is doing that beautifulness to my cheek and it's matte. Mm. I, I don't think there's any greater satisfaction that I get applying makeup than doing blush, although maybe putting on false eyelashes. Like just seeing that instantaneous, just change in the look of your skin. Mmm, love this color. And then there's this peachy shade right up here, like really goldeny peach. And so I'm gonna get a little bit of that on my brush and just kind of use it on the border, like the upper border of where I applied that blush and it kind of softens stuff. Okay, now e.l.f. has some really interesting stick highlighters. What are they called? Um, targeted Natural Glow Sticks. And I was sent these. They have one in Pink Pearl Glow, one in Champagne Glow, and then Fresh Morning Dew. Fresh Morning Dew is not like a traditional highlighter. I'm going to see if I can just kind of demonstrate this for you. When you put this on, it's basically just adding like a dewy sort of sheen to the skin. It's like if I sprayed Pam on my skin here, you know, it, it just makes you a little, a little greasy. And that's the way you're getting your sheen. You're not getting it through shimmer and sparkle, but just by like adding a little do to your skin. An old school makeup artist would probably see this and be like, yeah, I just dab Vaseline on the skin to get that kind of look. So I don't know, whatever, it's fine. But um, these sticks are really pretty. I'm using the Pink Pearl Glow. I think it just has an even brighter look on the skin. And I'm gonna just kind of give myself a little streak of that here and then blend over it with my small stipple brush. And contrary to what you might think is coming, given the texture of that last stick I described, these are not overly sticky or greasy at all. These actually feel quite dry to the touch. Um, they're not hard to blend, but they, they don't um, leave your skin feeling any unusual texture. But it's quite a pretty glow, I think. I'm gonna do a little on the upper lip. 
And then I'll show you a little swatch here of the champagne one. This one I don't love so much just because I feel like it has a real yellowy look to it. Pink Pearl, definitely a favorite. And then I got a powder highlight. So we're layering it up here. This is the Shimmer Highlighting Powder in Pearl Glow. Brace yourselves. Something's about to go down here. Look at this highlight here. We're talking bold. Basically white highlight. If you're a fair skinned person looking for something that will show up on your skin and this does not have glitter in it, this particular shade seems to be a lot more pigmented, a lot more like velvety smooth than another shade that I tried. I will have to look up what that particular shade was, but like the first time I tried one of these, I wasn't blown away. So this one, I'm just gonna get a little bit of product on my brush, tap it off and we are layering directly on top of the cream product. But you look at this shine. Would you look at that? Just look at it. But we do have a very like kind of matte base going on on the skin so I don't feel bad about having all this glow right now. I mean, it's gorgeous. I can't take anything away from that highlight. Like that is pronounced and it's still that way even if you didn't layer it on top of the cream. It's just intense in its own right. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of this Makeup Mist and Set. I love this stuff. This is a great little setting spray. It says with aloe, green tea, cucumber, and vitamins A, C, and E. This is just the regular one. You best believe I'm not gonna take that gel mist and put it on top of this look at this point in time. Nice mist, nice fine mist from that. And I am actually very, very pleased with the way my skin looks right now. The highlight is giving me glow. Um, the bronzer looked great. The blushes were nice. The foundation in terms of medium coverage is okay. You just kind of got to watch it on the staying power if you have any tendency of being oily around the nose. But yeah, good stuff. I like it. Now I'm going to do brows. And I have this little $2 brow pencil that's actually quite good. It's in neutral brown. And it's just a brow pencil on one end and the spoolie on the the other and the thickness of the brow pencil. I feel like I've described this a lot of times before, but it's not as skinny as a Brow Wiz or a NYX Micro Brow or, um, you know, any of those really skinny ones, but it is retractable. Very, very workable color for dark haired peeps. I feel like my Cupid's bow is shouting at me right now. <laughs> There's so much highlight there. And I'm going to go through that with the spoolie. And I don't have an e.l.f. Um, brow gel, so I'm just going to have to take something. I'll take this cover girl and just set them down because sometimes my brows, they just like to, they like to look fluffy. You know, God decided to not give me a lot of volume in my hair, but instead apply all that volume to my eyebrows. No, seriously, God, thank you for my brows. I love my brows now. I appreciate my brows. I'm not that girl in high school who tweezed them to nothingness. Yeah, I totally did a bad thing with my brows in high school. Part of college, I think it was too. Like I just went way too thin. How did I think it was a good look? Why didn't somebody say, hey, Girlfriend, you've been given decent, thick, nice brows. Like, look at your dad, look at your mom, look at your sister and brother. These are the brows that run in this family. Don't fight it. I hope I saved somebody there who was on the edge of tweezing their brows way too thin. Let me be the one to tell you since nobody really told me. Here's what happened. When I was a little girl, little kid, I remember having like a lot of a uh, little, uh, you call it peach fuzz. It wasn't like I had a visible unibrow, but I had hair, like quite a bit of it growing here right between my brows. And I remember like family members would like pet that area there. And I think that got in my head. And then once I became of age to wear makeup quite a bit, I did away with that in a hurry. See, it's these childhood issues that we internalize and take with us into adulthood. This is getting way too deep. Um, gel. See how it's getting a little bit light outside now? It's our friend the cottonwood tree, always accompanying us as we do our makeup. For eyes, I gotta have a little chat with you as well about what you will not see me use in this video. This Aqua Beauty Island Breeze palette here, I don't have the outer packaging anymore, but this is what it looks like. It's a pretty, <laughs> It's a pretty selection of eyeshadow, this unusual greenish color, a lot of very usual shades <laughs> that I would like here. But the texture of these, I feel like what they've done is put a powder on top of this, on the surface of the product, just kind of for show. And then when you really get into it and start using it, it's most definitely a cream. 
Um, that can make it tricky. That can make it hard to know what to expect as you put it on your eyes. Sometimes you get the pigmentation you expect out of a powder and then not so much. And they're not all like the same identical feel either. Even though I know there's a cream basis to these, like this one feels way more powdery than this one. And I've definitely worked through the top layer of both. So um, it's kind of confusing and it got very creasy on my eyes by only, you know, noontime the other day when I was wearing it. So needless to say, not very impressed by that product, but they do have a new Mad for Matte palette. I love the original Mad for Matte. Then they came out with the one that had like the kind of orangey and purple sunset colors, and now they have this. So I think I will use this in this video. This might be what some of you are interested in. It's called Holy Smokes. All right, so Milani eyeshadow primer. I don't think I have an e.l.f. primer. I think what I wanna to try to do is sort of a warm and cool combo look here. I might work in some of these pretty rich jewel tones, but also like something like that in the crease, like this uh, terracotta orangey brown. I love the size of these palettes, by the way. Like they're compact, but you're really getting a good shade range in all of them. And you see they're pigmented. Like, I, I have no struggle picking up the color. I don't tend to have any problems blending these out. I mean, this is my first time with this particular one, but just talking about my history with the others, the other Mad for Mattes, I think they're good. As I blend it out, I'm kind of shearing it up toward the eyebrow. And then I guess we'll take the white. I don't want this very heavy on the skin, but I'll use that kind of as a highlight. I'm not really one for super thick under the brow highlights. Now what? Um, do we want to do blue, dark teal, like a mix of teal and forest green? Dang, that picked up a lot on the brush. It's a very dark shade, so I think if you're wearing this like at a glance, I'm not sure how much people would really notice it. And that's kind of the fun thing about rich colors is that you can use them. You can switch up your look a little bit, but they're not screaming at people. Although sometimes you want to scream at people, so there are other shadows for that. Yeah, this color is beautiful though. I was a little worried that it would be so dark that the color wouldn't really show, but you can see it. I mean, it's pretty. It's showing up true to color, according to what I see in the palette. So as you can see, I'm putting that over about two thirds of the lid and I'm leaving myself a little space. And then I think I wanna play with this like dusty sky blue color right here. Is anybody else intrigued by that? It's a little gray with a hint of blue in it. I feel like I want maybe a, a little more brown, like a mix of browns maybe in the crease, like some of the dark brown and some of this really warm shade, just to, um, I don't know, transition out of the dark teal. I'm using a very small crease brush right now, by the way, MUA Makeup Academy that I got from CVS. I think it's the 310. I always try to link to my brushes and the makeup products down below, um, but sometimes there are certain things like this, is one of those things, sometimes I can find it online, sometimes I can't, and blend over that. And then I want to just reinforce the teal just a bit more. Sometimes when you blend, you just lose things a little bit, just lose a little intensity, so no shame in going back and adding a little more. I'm doing just a little bit more of the terracotta um, warmth like right in here. I don't always take stuff in quite so far there, but I'm just feeling compelled to. Actually, you know what I also think would be pretty is if I went into that shimmery highlight and just used a little bit of this right up here. Overlap that. And then with a really small brush, get a little shine going right in here. As for what's happening under the eye, um, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of this Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight. Sorry, I don't have anything from e.l.f. to perform this function for me right now, but I like to lay that down in my lower inner rim. And then I'll use my smudge brush and going to the warm color here. I'm gonna use a lot of that on the lower lash line today. Can I tell you a quick story about another product I'm not gonna be using in this video? This e.l.f. waterproof liquid liner. Oh, so disappointing. Jet black, 
it seems like it would be good and it applied nicely with this little brush tip, but it's not waterproof. It's just not. It was transferring up here. I almost never have that happen. It was collecting really weirdly and transferring um, onto my lower lash line, getting all gunked up in the corner of my eye. So I'm not going to use that today. Jordana Color Envy in Black Envy. It's an amazing liner. I need a little more darkness on the lower lash, so I'm going to use the dark brown. This is what I, I normally do because uh, for the shape of my eye, I like making sure the wing is kind of connected to the lower lash line in some way. I tend to use the angled brush. It just very quickly puts the shadow where it needs to be. And I apologize, but I do not have an e.l.f. mascara to use at this time. <laughs> Um, I've not had a very good history with different e.l.f. mascaras. I don't know that there's ever been one that I've truly loved. But I will use a drugstore mascara. I'll use this um, CoverGirl Total Tease. I think I just nailed myself on the uh, brow bone there, but nothing came off. Oh, touched by an angel. Looking up really close at my skin in this mirror, um, I think I went a little overboard with the highlight. The pearly highlight, the powder one, could have done less of that. I'm seeing a little more texture than I want to see on my skin right now, right up in this particular area. Next, I'm gonna just throw on some lashes, Red Cherry number 43s, and I will be right back. So I got my lashes on there, and I'm pretty happy with the eye look. But I wanna use their liquid matte lipstick in Wine Tour. This one was kind of randomly sent to me, and I've never tried their matte liquid lipstick before. Applicator is like a pointed doe foot that has a little like hollow part in the center. Okay, note the color you're seeing right now, and we'll see if it deepens a lot. I feel like it is deepening as it's drying, um, but it feels super lightweight and thin on my lips, so I do like the texture. My lips can move and I don't feel like the product is pulling. And just the look overall, I mean, I kind of stopped after I did the face stuff and told you what I was thinking about it. I think those skincare things that I used at the start, the balm, kind of balm to water moisturizer and the gel spray were a little gimmicky. And honestly, the times I've used them, they have not provided enough like lasting moisture on my skin. This brush that holds the product, I kind of liked it. Um, I found it to be soft. I don't know that the whole putting the product in the brush matters so much as just the fact that it's a really soft, nice, dense brush. And it was kind of easy to get, you know, to the areas where I needed to blend. And it even blended out my concealer pretty good. Didn't love that concealer, by the way, that I used on the under eyes. The texture there is a little dry. I loved um, the powder that I used to set, like, the center of my face and my under eye. Love the warm bronzer. The matte blush duo that I'm wearing is just absolutely outstanding. And I like the shimmer highlight and pearl glow, although pace yourself a little bit. <laughs> the targeted glow stick was nice. That was in the shade Pink Pearl Glow. I like that. Pigmented cream highlight without being sticky. Talked about the foundation a little bit. You know, medium coverage, kind of average foundation. Doesn't quite have the staying power for me that even like Rimmel Lasting Finish does. Although this isn't bad. It's just I expect a little better staying power on my skin. The Holy Smokes palette, not a bad palette. Like I'm fairly satisfied with the look, but this is probably third place in terms of the other other mad for mats. I just want to show you. This is the part two. I absolutely love that one. I love that there's plum in there. There's a black. There are so many nice like transition mid-tone shades. This is the first one and I really like this too for so many reasons. There's a nice mix of warm and cool here and really good textures. It's really just a matter of shade preference. For some people this might be your favorite. The Holy Smokes with all the cool tones. That teal and blue are nice shades. If you are looking for a good drugstore matte palette, definitely look at these. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I hope this gave you a lot of info on a lot of different e.l.f. products and I will see you guys very soon. Bye!